It could also be useful to develop a rubric to guide peer review, whether it be of the requirements process, the design, or even the code. Such a rubric might contain elements that consider understandability, the definition or implementation of functional requirements, the definition or implementation of non-functional requirements, and whether their algorithms are concise, for example, whether they have included any unnecessary steps or data. One useful activity to help students reflect on and understand the software development process is to ask them to define their own assessment rubrics. They could be asked to develop a rubric for each phase of the software development process aligned with their specific project. At more advanced levels, we can also start to explore the quality of student skills and understanding of decomposition. When they developed their design, how did they break up the problem into smaller problems? Was this a sensible structure? Often, if we have not thought through our solution in sufficient detail, we have to make changes to our design. It is quite common to make small changes. However, if large changes are made, particularly to the decomposition of our solution, that can indicate that we missed important requirements. Asking students to describe their changes in design as they make them and to explore where those changes came from in relation to the requirements can be a useful discussion to help evaluate their understanding. These aspects might also be included in a rubric for assessment, depending on the level of the students involved. We can also explore opportunities for abstraction. It may not be realistic to ask students to develop abstract algorithms at first. It would be appropriate to focus on the implementation of functional requirements and understanding of the problem space in the first instance. However, for advanced students, or perhaps as a classroom exercise, students may want to consider the idea of abstraction. A useful beginning question here is whether they can observe any task within their software system, perhaps a functional requirement or an algorithm that they have developed, that might be useful in another program. Once they have identified a list of these, they can then explore whether the algorithms that they have developed are general enough to be used elsewhere. Do they contain instructions or data that is only useful for solving this problem? Could we develop a more general form that is still useful? Students could be asked to define a library of useful algorithms based upon their project work. What would it contain? Is it logical to put all the algorithms together? These questions can be used to drive a discussion on how libraries work in code. 